Hello, I'm Ronald Day, Associate Vice President of the David Rothenberg Center for Public Policy, and welcome to Both Sides of the Bars, a discussion-driven show that examines the criminal justice system from various perspectives, including from those most impacted by the system. We discuss critical questions about how the current system works, its intersections with social justice, and highlight the efforts that are being made to improve the lives of everyone that is affected by it. We ask you, the viewer, to please spread the word about both sides of the bars and share your comments with us on Twitter at The Fortune Society. So today, we're gonna to be talking about a very important issue in New York City, and that's the Fair Chance Act. And I have with me two dynamic guests. One, Alyssa Aguilera from Vocal New York, and Hannah El Fiki yes. from the Fortune Society. So let me share with our guests a little bit about you. So Alyssa, political director, Vocal New York, is a, a grassroots company organizing group that builds power among low-income people impacted by HIV AIDS, the drug war, and mass incarceration. At Vocal, Alyssa leads campaigns to reform discriminatory policing practices, create alternatives to the drug war, and address the collateral consequences of mass incarceration. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for being on the show with us. Thank you for having me. And let me share some information as well about uh, Hannah. So you've been working at the Fortune Society for a little less than a year. Yes. Right? As a career advisor in our employment services department. Correct. And you're enrolled at John Jay pursuing a bachelor's degree in psychology? Yes, I am. Okay. And you help our clients identify barriers to employment, uh, which can range from housing to uh, lack of education, uh, not having the skill set, and helping them secure a proper attire, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. Okay, great. So, so let's get into this, what we believe is going to be a dynamic conversation about the Fair Chance Act. So October 27th, mm -hmm. the Fair Chance Act became law in New York City. Right? A lot of people have no idea, have no inclination what the Fair, Ch what the Fair Chance Act is mm -hmm. or what it does. So what I would like to do is to start with you, Alyssa, and say, can you kind of like frame the conversation for us so that our audience will have an understanding of the Fair Chance Act and its implications? All right, we know that it's about providing uh, a fair opportunity for people with criminal records to have access to employment. But can you share some information about it, please? Sure. So the, the, the Fair Chance Act is New York City legislation. So it was passed through the city council, signed by the mayor. And essentially what it will do is it amends the city's human rights charter. And the human rights charter are the laws and the policies that say, you know, this is discrimination or not. Yeah. And what it really does is it says that you cannot, it outlines a process for employers for how to consider a criminal record history when they're they're going through the hiring process. So it does a couple of things. One, it says you cannot ask about criminal record history right. on job postings, announcements, mm -hmm. anything like that. You also can't ask about criminal record history on the application itself. So that's sometimes we say ban the box. So when sure. they're referring to the box, they mean that little box on the application that says check here if you've ever been convicted of a felony, a crime, or whatever. Um, but this law actually goes beyond that as well. It also says you can't ask about conviction histories during an interview. You have to wait till after a conditional job offer um, of employment. So it's really saying, you know, let people go through the whole process, show their qualifications and their merits, and then we'll consider criminal record history. Oh. And so that's what this law does. It goes into a, it went into effect on October 27th. It impacts all employers with four or more employees. So it's quite a lot. And, um, and yeah, so it's gonna have a really big impact um, in, in the city. We think it's the strongest, most progressive law in the country for fair chance hiring. And, um, and so we wanna make sure it's implemented and people mm -hmm. actually know about it. Well, thank you for sharing that context so that our viewing audience has an understanding of the Fair Chance Act and what it's designed to do. Mm -hmm. So Hannah, let's turn to you now. So again, you work at the Fortune Society, you're yes. in employment services and you were released from incarceration at some point yourself yes. and felt strongly that you would face discrimination as a job seeker. Can you share your experience with us? Sure. Um, I'm an individual that got involved uh, with the criminal justice aspect yeah. later in my life. 
Um, so during my incarceration and as I uh, returned home, my fear became employment. Yes. Uh, my field of work is social work. I love what I do. I'm good at it. And I was afraid that I was going to have to seek something else. I actually came to Fortune Society as a client because of that fear. Um, and while I was there participating in the workshop, um, they encouraged me to go further um, and have no feel that there's no barriers that I can't overcome in terms of that. And that was actually a, a huge relief for me because I was going to, uh, my, you know, my associate's degree and everything I was working through um, was in that field. So I was afraid I was going to have to restart. And at this age, it was pretty impacting on my life. And so as a career advisor, you work with people on a daily basis. I mean, we have hundreds of clients yes. that are uh, offered services. And so what were the services that you received that we provide on a regular basis to prepare people for these employment opportunities? Well, I completed the first thing is I completed a two week job readiness workshop. Yes. Um, and that is more geared to conducting yourself appropriately during an interview, yes. what to say, what not to say, how much to say, how much you don't say. Um, and that's crucial during the, the interview process. Yes. Um, when I sat with my career advisor, I was told of the different uh, vocational training programs. I chose to do the in transitional work program, which is the part-time paid internship, um, as a way of getting myself in the doorway um, and returning back to the work field. And through that, I did my internship actually at Fortune in the Employment Services mm -hmm. Department, and I was able to secure employment upon completing it yes. with Fortune Society. Yeah, and so we know that oftentimes, Alyssa, we send folks out who mm -hmm. are prepared as Hannah was prepared during the job readiness training for an opportunity, and you know sometimes they're denied an op they're denied the job, mm -hmm. and we know that there's a, a, a lot of discrimination, there's a lot of stigma associated with the criminal conviction. So, what can people do if they feel like they face discrimination? Sometimes it's overt, right? Sometimes it's not. What are the remedies in the Fair Chance Act? Yeah, so one of the reasons that this law is so great is because it's not it's not just a, you know, a beautiful bill that has this ideal language and then nothing to hold people accountable. It actually has written into the law um, that people can, um, you know, bring a private right of action, which means that they can get their own attorney to bring cases um, against employers that are violating the law. And that includes, um, you know, damages so people can get, you know, some, some monetary reward for actually bringing forward those cases. And that's a big, you know, component to give people incentive to go through an often long process that, mm -hmm. you know, is probably not that, you know, especially for people looking for a job, yeah, you know, the so last so thing so they so want to do is to go through this big legal exactly. process and not know. Um, so, so that's an option. And then also the city's Human Rights Commission, um, which you can reach by calling 311 and asking for civil rights, or you can go onto their website. It's actually nyc.gov slash fairchancenyc, and you can file a complaint with them. So even if you don't want to go through the whole process, you can give a tip and say, hey, this employer um, you know, violated the law. I was asked a question too early, just so we can make sure that you know, employers are actually being held accountable. Sure. And, and so those are some of the methods that we are, you know, as the bill is getting rolled out, that we want to make sure that we see um, adequate implementation of, of the new law. Sure, thank you. So one of the things that has come up is we know that a lot of discrimination is not just associated with the conviction, but the majority of people who are incarcerated in New York City are minorities, mm -hmm. right? And there has been some research that has said that a white person without a criminal record is more likely to receive a call back or an interview than an African American without a criminal record. Mm -hmm. so, so we know that there's some, some conscious and unconscious bias regarding race. And so the issue now I'm thinking is, will there be a proxy now for discriminating against people that have criminal records? Sometimes when people apply for jobs, although they're not checking the box now, sometimes you are asked to upload a resume. Mm -hmm. And let's say a person who served some time in prison, some of them there might be a gap on a resume. Some people even put on their resume that they were in a correctional facility. So how do you think that's going to potentially play out? 
will there be some discrimination mm -hmm. that's a proxy mm -hmm. for criminal justice or criminal convictions? Because some employers, at least from experience, we've determined they're kind of like hardened against hiring someone with a criminal record. Even though, if you, again, if you look at the research shows, if you give a person an opportunity, you can get a really great employee who could be an asset to your company. Correct. But you have to be willing to give the person the chance. So do you see that as a potential issue? Right, I mean, I think that we have to be realistic and acknowledge that, you know, all employment discrimination is not going to go away with Absolutely. the passage of this law. Absolutely. And, you know, as you mentioned, there's lots of other factors that are at play. You know, there's studies that say that if your name sounds too ethnic, yeah. that you'll, you're less likely yeah. to get a job, um, yeah. a, a job interview. So there are obviously lots of factors at play. But I think that what's really important about this, this law and and the bigger conversation and the movement that is behind it that you know everybody from president obama to the Koch brothers are talking about this is it really questions you know why do we use criminal record history as a way of evaluating people's ability to do a job it's not good for the economy it's not good for recidivism it's not good for communities of color that are impacted by mass incarceration yeah. i think that you know yes we want the laws to change and we want people to have concrete um you know uh you know, improvements in their lives, but we also need to shift the narrative and get people to question why, you know, a criminal record means a permanent um, sentence of unemployment and, 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 and not being able to access a, dec access a decent job. Yeah, and that's exactly right. So Hannah, yes. tell us a little bit more about, so again, we're preparing clients for these gainful employment opportunities. And so when they face this discrimination, and they come back to us, you know, what provisions do we have in place for them to be able to deal with those type of situations? Well, um, a lot of our clients do um, come and they're frustrated. They're frustrated. Uh, they feel that they are still serving a sentence mm -hmm. because they continuously tell me that yes. they have paid their debt to society mm -hmm. and yet no one is providing them with that opportunity for employment. Yeah. Um, so I basically more so evaluate how the interview went um, and then of course direct them to the advocacy department that we have yes. <laughs> for them to continue further and to really um, see is it their impression of the fact that they didn't pr um, get the job or is it something really that the employer discriminated on. Yes, okay, that's great. And so how do, can we go a little bit more into, into the weeds? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, one of the things that came up for me is, okay, so a conditional offer is now the threshold. Mm -hmm. So a person gets an interview and, you know, if they're a solid candidate, so the employee is supposed to now not evaluate anything about criminal record, right? My understanding is that they're not supposed to do, like, searches. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about that? Because we know that some employers take the initiative, you know, they have HR staff that will go online, go to the Department of Corrections yeah. website, go to a parole website and see, okay, we have the person's name, we have the person's information, is this person on parole, mm -hmm. whatever. Is that a violation as well? Can yes. you speak to so, that? So the law clearly states that any inquiry about criminal record history cannot be done until after uh, the conditional offer stage. Okay. So any inquiry means, you know, asking about it. Yes. It means mm -hmm. um, looking somebody up in, uh, you know, any sort of database, yes. running a criminal background check. Yes. All of that stuff is illegal. Okay. Obviously, you know, if somebody's at home on their iPad yes. in the middle of the night um, yes, yes, yes. looking someone up, you know, maybe we aren't going to be able to figure that stuff sure, out. Sure. But the law is very clear that you, you that, that that's a violation and cannot be done. Got it. And what about the very back end? So mm -hmm. I interview for a job, you think that I'm a solid candidate, and then you do the criminal background check. Right. What happens then? Do I then provide information about my criminal background? I mean, the criminal background check was already done. Right. Am I supposed to say, like, fill out an application now or some document that says, I, I have these convictions, and is, is it supposed to match up with the background check? Or is the employer supposed to look just to determine if the conviction would act as an impediment in right. some way, right, to me getting that job? So right. how will that work? So, so 
So you have a condition, and this is all for people, for jobs and yes, employers yes, yes, that yes. want to actually run background checks. I would argue there are many jobs that if That's you're going point. through a process and hiring people, you interview them, you like them, you know, what's even the point of doing that? So I think that's something we want to raise. Like for some jobs where it's not sensitive in nature, um, you know, we should be encouraging people. Like I hire people and I never run background checks. And it works out great. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so, so putting that aside, so let's say you're, you're somebody that um, I, I find a candidate that I want to hire, yes. but I want to run a background check. I run it. And then there's a, a real process for how that works. So it's fair and transparent. So it says, okay, I'm going to, uh, I, I see your background and and if there's nothing you want to do further, you still want to hire the person, great. You don't have to do anything different. Yeah. But if you want to take adverse action, so essentially if you want to deny somebody a job, what you need to do is, uh, is show them what you, the record that you're looking at. Yeah. Because oftentimes, um, you know, people with common names or maybe you're arrested for something and not convicted. And, you know, rap sheets are kind of confusing to read. And I doubt that all employers are adequately, adequately trained on how to read them. So we want to make sure that you know, the, the whatever, we're, we're all, we're both looking at the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I say, okay, so here is your rap sheet. This is what I saw. This conviction right here is what's giving me pause. It's why I want to um, rescind the offer. And then they need to actually fill out a form that explains in writing how the job duties are connected to the conviction, right? Mm -hmm. So we can't, we don't want people to run backgrounds and say, oh, you got into a fight 10 years ago and you have an assault charge mm -hmm. and now you're trying to work, you know, um, in a the container store or something like that what does that you know what does that have to do with each other mm -hmm. and you have to do what's called um in new york state we have article 23a language yes. so so one important thing to know is that it's already been illegal to discriminate based on criminal record history before the fair chance act mm -hmm. was passed except that there was just no process sure, for how sure. to do it so this is so the fair chance act is really about creating a process so um at that point you need to explain um, so, so it takes into account like how long ago was the was the conviction? What have you done to sort of rebuild your life or to show that you're not that you know that that mistake you've moved on from it and you've um, you've grown from that. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things should be taken into account, and then you explain you write that in writing, and then and then you can deny somebody a job and employers can protect themselves. So that's you know the process. It is a bit you know it's it's definitely more than just banning the box. So we really want people to, um, you know, go onto our website, fairchancenyc.org, um, you know, check in with the city's website to make sure that, you know, we know exactly how um, the law should be implemented and making sure that people aren't being discriminated against. Great. And Hannah, what do you suggest that we do to help to continue to prepare people so that when they get an opportunity, they're actually ready for it, right, and equipped so that there'll be less opportunity for discrimination because you know sometimes we want people to be thoroughly prepared for the interviews mm -hmm. right. and you spoke about that so you, you have some suggestions for, for for us there well i believe that this is um with this act it's something that will change uh the way we run the workshop because uh we do need to educate our clients um, as to what they, um, the rights that they have in terms of the whole process so that when they sincerely feel that they've been discriminated or discredited because of their criminal justice background, they, they know they have a solution and not get further um, discouraged or frustrated because a lot of times that will return them to the streets and back to what they were doing that landed them in, in jail at, in the first place. And so, Alyssa, a question for you about employers. I recall talking to employers sometimes, and they, they feel trepidation about laws that kind of like squeeze them mm -hmm. and, and place constraints on them. They feel like you're telling me who I should hire. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to that? Because I've, I mean, I'm saying that that's not necessarily the case. The law gives you the opportunity to hire the person that you think is most suitable for mm -hmm. the job without necessarily evaluating criminal, the criminal history of the person. So what do you, what, what do you say to that? Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of things. One, I think that, um, you know, before the fair, I think that the Fair Chance Act is actually, um, ben you would argue that it's beneficial to employers yes. um, in order to protect themselves from violating um, Article 23A law, right. which already is in, in place. So um, Party City, Bed Bath & Beyond, they actually got in trouble with the New York State Attorney General's office lately because they were saying like, 
no felons can apply or something like just blatantly illegal. And if the Fair Chance Act was in effect, they would know how to um, process and to consider conviction histories in their hiring process. Um, and this law does, and then the second thing we want to say is that this law does not require that you hire anybody with a conviction history. All it says is give people a fair shot to, you know, go through the process, and then if something comes up that is actually going to be an impediment or a, you know, reasonable risk of why you want to deny them a job, then, um, then that's, then that's fine. You can deny the job in that instance, but mm -hmm. we just want to make sure people aren't being unfairly, unnecessarily discriminated against. And, you know, as you guys were saying, um, you know, oftentimes uh, people just need a fair chance to get work and they, and they become the best employers. And it helps employers not immediately dismiss a whole pool of applicants because they check yes. It, um, and, you know, that could have been the best person for the job. And people are, th with this law, you're able to have a, a wider pool of applicants and, and really find the best person without using the criminal background as a, a way to sort of cloud their judgment and cloud their thinking. Yeah, that's, that's a great, great answer. Um, one of the things that has come up as well is, so I know organizations that serve people with criminal records are considering how to now, as you said, Hannah, a little while ago, how to advise people. Because I, I believe mm -hmm. there's a provision in the statute as well that says about if someone voluntarily discloses information, I think it says that the employee should try not to continue along that yeah. path. Yeah, so but asking those questions. Mm -hmm. So the city released their guidance recently. Yes. And you know, somebody says and, and, and I understand that it's it's difficult because you know the, the Fortune Society and many reentry organizations, the whole ethos is about, you know, being forthright and yes, honest yes, and yes. acknowledging it but saying who you are today. Um, and so so it, it is a little bit in conflict, but you know, there unfortunately there are so many people that don't have the fortune, the fortune, uh, the mm -hmm. the benefit of being yes, at the yes, Fortune Society yes. and going through those sorts of processes, um, and so we want to make sure that everyone is the most equipped. And so, so essentially, what the the law says, it, the guidance from the city is saying, you know, if somebody says something, be like, okay, great, yeah. and then kind of move on from it, not to ask any further questions. And so, Hannah, do you feel now? as someone who was involved in the system yourself, who now works at the Fortune Society, but do you feel confident that this law is going in the right direction insofar as offering folks with criminal records the opportunity to secure gainful employment? Do you feel like we're on the right track? Yes, I do. Um, with the Fair Chance Act, um, I feel that it will give our clients or any other individual with a criminal justice background the opportunity to interview for this job and the focus be on their abilities and their skills and not on their criminal justice background and uh, many of our clients are more than qualified for the job and they have proven to be loyal to their um, you know uh, previous employers yeah. but because some individuals are just hung up on that one thing they're denied and it gets very frustrating for them. So I think that this way they can walk into an interview and concentrate on the fact uh, that they have the skills and the abilities and speak about that as opposed to speaking about their criminal justice background. And you spoke about your concerns. How do you feel now personally having been in a position where you're like, you know, I might not be able to get a job? Like, do you feel much more confident yourself? You know. Absolutely. Um, Fortune gave me back that confidence because they were giving me opportunities to continue mm -hmm. what I do and I enjoy what I do. And so I pass that along to a lot of my clients and I, I tell them, you know, reach for the stars. Mm -hmm. um, you can go ahead and pursue whatever you'd like to, but you have to, you know, remain confident and know that you can do it. Sure. And with this, I, like I said, I, I think it will give them that opportunity to do so. What about, are there some employers that are outside the realm of the Fair Chance Act? Because some, I'm sure some clients and just people in the general public will say, well, does this job apply? Does this agency apply? That's a great question. Um, so sometimes, you know, when we, when we were talking about this bill, the first things people's mind goes to is like, well, you're going to have, you know, sex offenders exactly. working at daycares yes, and, yes. you know, the children and all the, the sort of um, questions. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Hysteria. obviously, mm -hmm. um, and those, this, this, the Fair Chance Act does not touch any 
job where state or federal laws require a criminal background check. Yeah. So that's going to be anything working with children, working with um, uh, people with disabilities, working with um, aging populations, basically anybody that is vulnerable or there's sort of this a sensitive nature to the job, um, mm -hmm. this law is not going to impact that because we, we think that it is, you know, it is going to, it is important to make sure that for those populations that, you know, people have a full picture, you don't want to necessarily create, um, you know, unreasonable risk in those situations. So the Fair Chance Act, um, uh, there are several jobs that are exempt from it and, and those are the ones that would be. Got it. Thank you. So we have just a couple of minutes left. Any uh, parting words about the Fair Chance Act that you think will be valuable for our audience? I feel that um, everyone should be more educated on the Fair Chance Act. Um, it'll give everybody a better understanding of their rights as an employer and as an individual applying for um, employment. Yes. And the better we understand, we can move forward. Thank you. And Alyssa, some parting yeah, words? Yeah, I definitely echo those sentiments. Um, unfortunately, you know, you can write the best civil rights legislation, but right. it doesn't do anything unless people know their rights and yes. stand up and say, hey, I've been discriminated against. Yes. And so at Vocal, you know, we, we um, are a membership-based organization. Yes. Many of our members are formerly incarcerated looking yes. for works. So we want to, um, you know, send people, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a record and you're looking for a job and um, you want to sort of share with us how it's going, what kind of questions you're being asked, any best practices, we're definitely going to lean on Fortune yeah. for how do we advise people going through the process. You know, we, this is all new and it's great, but we need to, you know, work together and, and figure it out together. Yeah. And so we're looking forward to it, but I think that overall this is, you know, a step in the right direction and, okay. and we're excited about it. And we, we concur. And the, the point also is that, as you know, the employers have rights too. Mm -hmm. right. This is not for them to say hire anybody who has a criminal record. So thank you for being on the show, Alyssa. Thank you, Hannah, for being on the show. Thank you for the opportunity. Really value, valuable conversation. So thank you, uh, Alyssa and Hannah, for joining us on both sides of the bars today. And thank you in TV land for joining us as well. If you're interested in finding out more about the Fortune Society, please check us out on the web at thefortunesociety.org or on Facebook by typing in the Fortune Society. This is Ronald Day as we critically look at both sides of the bars.